Hello again and welcome to my channel. So the next steps now after the house sale fell through on Friday just before bank holiday weekend. First off I want to thank you all for all your comments and your perspectives and advice and I do read them all and I do try to reply to all of you and I have to say it was really interesting to get so many different points of view on what happened. Um, you know, I'm, when you're selling a house, you're very emotionally attached to it and it's very hard to not react emotionally. I try not to, but you can't help it. It's your home. And, and you know, when you, you think that you've got a buyer and it's going through, the disappointment is just overwhelming. It, it's, you know, this has happened to me before on a, a previous um, house I sold and it was it went on for years it was I just don't want to be in that boat again but I did take on board um, a lot of your comments and advice and um, you know it's you know I, did, I spoke you know I have spoken with the agent well actually it I have had to chase the agent all weekend and yesterday so it ended up with me sending him a rather stern email last night saying why have you not spoken to the potential buyer and found out where her head's at and why the valuation is what they say it is and you know get some feedback on this you know why are you just letting it go anyway so he did phone her this morning like it's Wednesday morning this happened last Friday I mean how incompetent you have to be and she said she would go meet me halfway. But she also said if anything else come up, she would revise it again. <sighs> now, my response to the agent was, I think in the grand scheme of things, I'll meet her halfway because it's... I mean, part of it is that, it, you know, it's so stressful that you just want it to be over with. Um, I do see her point of view, um, and, but I don't want to undersell my house. But at the same time, am I going to be hanging out and waiting for a better offer that might not come? But what does concern me is the comment that if something else comes up, well, she's got her surveyor report in front of her. Surely there can't be anything else that's going to come up. But that comment is just making me nervous. Um, and, you know, my response is that I, I, I just, you know, I can't accept that to meet her halfway and then have her chip away again if she finds something else. Now, what can you find? Your surveyor has said everything is fine. The only other thing of the searches, um, which should have been done by now, um, and they're not going to, they're not going to show anything. They're just your standard searches. I mean, I did them myself when I moved here. There's, a, there's nothing there to be concerned about. So, but that that comment just, you know, is is a little bit alarming. Anyhow, the agents did put the house back up for sale on on the weekend. Well, I think it was. Sunday or Monday when it went live <sighs> and um, we actually have a viewing this week so I've requested that the viewing still goes ahead so I'm willing to meet her halfway but the viewing goes ahead in case she tries to pull you know the the rug under me again um, I, I just I just can't cope with having to go keep going back to the, the start um, now, one of you also recommended that I watch um, Moving with Charlie YouTube channel. I wish I'd known about this channel before I even put my house on the market. I made every cardinal sin picking an estate agent. And honestly, they are useless. They don't do anything other than list it on right move prime location and the usual one they don't actually do anything over and above that and you can see why online marketplaces like purple bricks do so well because 
you're doing exactly the same thing. The only difference is you're doing the viewings yourself. Um, I just, there's, there's just the, everything they've said they're going to do, they haven't done. Um, but I also, I mean, I, I really recommend, just out of interest, you just watch some of his uh, videos. He was saying, like, when you're picking an agent, how to do internet research into them. So, like, look through who, what houses have been on the market the longest. And I did this exercise. Oh, excuse me. I did this exercise. And, and I, like, wrote down every agent that's had um, houses on the market for a long time. Some of them for three years. In Stratford-upon-Avon, how can you have a house on the market for that long? And... Um, Wow, it's, you know, it's the same two or three agents all the time. It was, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, you know, if you've just got a spare hour and you're interested in this, just, just do it. Watch one of his videos and do it. And the other thing he said to do was have a look, using Zoopla for this, um, who reduces the house prices the most. Because that shows that that's an agent that overvalues your property and then you have to bring the price down. And it stays on the market for longer that way, obviously. And I was gobsmacked. There were two agents that, like, it's mainly two agents doing it all the time. And actually, they're, they're I mean, they're, they're not like the biggest agents, um, but, you know, they're not the smallest either. Um, my agent actually came out fairly good on both of them. So that made me kind of think about whether I, I switch or not because I was like, gosh, some of them are worse than them. Uh, it's, uh, 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 if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely <laughs> follow the advice of moving with Charlie. Um, it's just, it, it's incredibly stressful. It's such a stressful time. So because we're going to be doing more viewings and because I didn't hear anything back from my agent till this morning, I um, have been, you know, tidying up the house, putting things under beds and backing cupboards and making beds up that uh, I'd already, already sort of stripped, ready to go. So just trying to make it look more presentable. And then a couple of things came up on the house over the weekend. So my expansion tank on my water system had a pinhole leak in it, just started spurting water out. But thankfully, I did a favour for a heating engineer not so long ago. So he owed me a favour back and he fixed it for me for free. I just had to buy the new tank. Um, oh, and then I was tidying up the front driveway um, because I had my van there all the time. And then I thought, right, I'll make this look more appealing. I'll move the wheelie bins away from the front of the house and put them along the drive. And as I did, I noticed my drain was blocked. So I had to get that fixed as well. But both fixed and there wasn't too much drama getting those done. Um, then good news for the, this week. So the van yesterday got its MOT. I mean, it was a bit of a palaver getting it because I went to pick the van up to take it to him and it wouldn't start. The battery was, wouldn't start. So I had to get someone in the gym to help me jump start it. Um, but I got it to him and he left it running while he did his test. He gave me an MOT certificate and we found out that what's causing the engine light, warning light to keep coming on is the sensor uh, is, is wrong with the, let me get this right, the crank sensor is malfunctioning. Anyhow, it's a part that's going to cost me £27, I think he said, and he's laboured £70, so he's ordered that and he'll get that fixed. But it didn't affect the MOT. The MOT is on the van. I can now drive it around and go away if I choose which I would choose if I didn't have to clean the house for viewing. Um, it's a shame, actually, I didn't have it for the weekend because I was done with a weekend break. And some other good news. And, I mean, it's, it's great news. It's always nice when this happens, but I'm also quite annoyed with myself that this happened in the first place. So I was cleaning out a couple of the bookcases in the conservatory, and the bookcases, actually one of my neighbour's daughters took them straight away, so perfect. 
and I was going and um, sorting out the old books. And in one of the books, I found a whole load of travellers' checks. <laughs> so a bit of a windfall, ching ching. But why were they in a book? Um, I mean, they must have been there for about fifteen years. I mean, no one uses travellers' checks anymore, did they? I mean, I haven't for wow, at least fifteen years. So anyway, I found some money. That's always a win, isn't it? So that's uh, where I am. So hopefully in my next update, I'll have a little bit more from the potential buyer and we'll have had this extra view in and we just have to keep going and try not to get stressed about everything. And um, I'm trying not to get emotional when I'm having these conversations. Um, I would also say on the uh, uh, moving with Charlie, gave me some tips on how to uh, self-value your house. Um, and I did that as well a lot the weekend. So, um, I mean, I still think uh, her valuation's low, but, uh, you know, I'm being, uh, I'm being realistic um, based on, because you have to, when you're doing these, you have to really go with what the houses have sold for, not what these agents are listing them for at the moment. Um, especially when those agents that I now have discovered that are listing similar houses higher are actually the ones that do the most reductions. <sighs> Where was he when I needed him two months ago? Hmm. Anyhow, I'm trying to be optimistic. And thank you for watching. We'll get there in the end. We really will. We'll get there in the end. See you soon. Bye.